Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And today we are once again playing The Political Machine 2020. And in today's episode, I thought it would be fun to carry on with our uh, vice presidential picks for uh, Joe Biden on the Democratic side. Um, so today I have created a, uh, a new AI for us to play around with. Uh, this is, of course, Susan Rice. She is the former National Security Advisor under the Obama administration, and she is also the former UN Ambassador uh, as well. So she's got quite a bit of diplomatic experience as well as um, uh, quite a bit of political experience as well. So again, don't judge on the um, bobblehead itself here in the game. Uh, this is really one of the best jobs that I think personally I've been able to do creating these candidates. Um, so not, not, not exactly like her, but hey, we'll take it, right? And she will none other than be going up against, of course, the Don, the 45th President of the United States. Thank you guys for catching that in the last episode. Uh, Donald Trump is, of course, the uh, business mogul from New York. He originated in Queens and graduated to Manhattan, and, and where he then went on to take the White House. So Susan Rice will be coming up against Donald Trump in this AI versus AI matchup. I think we will definitely have a fun time in today's episode. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. And since they didn't really have Washington, D.C. for Susan Rice um, in the uh, when I was creating the character, I had to put her in Virginia, but where she put her town hall, it almost looks like it's kind of in the D.C. area, right? Right? <laughs> and already we have Susan Rice going into New York, Donald Trump trying to secure Michigan. He's definitely going to need that if he has any chance at all of winning the presidency he needs to secure the Midwest. Right now it looks like it's uh, sort of independent throughout that entire region. However, things can change as the game goes on. Some of you were asking, what is this question mark? Um, so when you have, whenever you see a little question mark like that, they have potential if the AI candidate decides to go to that little question mark, um, they actually have potential to either have what's called a day wasted, where if it was more in, like, let's say Susan Rice went there and it was a Trump state, um, she may lose some stamina, whereas if she went to a more Democrat leaning state, she may get something like an intimidator, uh, maybe a fixer or something like that. So definitely a couple of good things there if they do decide to go to those question marks and we will definitely be reporting on that. We're now in week four. Let's go ahead and check out the big board. Looking for on week four, if the election were held today, no ideology points spent. It is still very early, but 292 to 246. And uh, Susan Rice definitely has the advantage there. But as we enter into week five, we also enter into our very first town halls. Donald Trump in New Hampshire, Susan Rice in Utah, laying down a campaign headquarters in both states. Potentially being able to flip either of those states, though, could be a little bit hard to do. Susan Rice coming in with adversity, uh, with diversity as her first ideology of the uh, simulation here for her. That is definitely going to help her in the southern regions throughout North Carolina all the way to Louisiana. Giving a speech there in uh, California for the president before going to Tulsa rally uh, where he will, uh, uh, looks like, deepen his base. New town halls in week seven, uh, Rhode Island for the president and Iowa for Ms. Rice. Interesting, fighting systemic racism, uh, definitely a popular opinion uh, as far as the uh, latest polls are suggesting in real life and America first for Donald Trump, keeping that nationalistic pride throughout his campaign in 2016 and carrying it over in 2020. Interesting thing um, to already look at in the Southwest is look at how blue, even though it's a light advantage or uh, a slim advantage here, minority appeal for Susan Rice is huge, 
where with Donald Trump, he's really got to try to carry that white vote, that non-educated, uh, non-college degree, blue-collar white vote. If he can keep that vote strong like he has in Ohio right now in the simulation, uh, then he's got a great chance of winning. Uh, but with 48, 41, and 11% undecided, this could really uh, look like it could be in Susan uh, Rice's favor at this time. But uh, like I said, still early, week 10, bringing home the troops for the president, keeping that nationalistic pride, reprimands for slavery, not necessarily an, a strong support behind national opinion there, uh, but definitely with minority appeal, something that could definitely uh, help out the Rice campaign uh, for the African American vote and the Latino vote, for example. And we have our first vice presidential picks for the week here. It looks like Dan Crenshaw has been chosen on the Republican side for Donald Trump. Dan Crenshaw is a Texas native, and he will now be the vice presidential pick for Donald Trump. Moving on to the Democratic side for Susan Rice, New York native and billionaire mogul Mike Bloomberg. Mike Bloomberg will be the vice presidential pick for Susan Rice as she picks banning hate speech as her next ideology going into week 12. 48-42 with 10% undecided throughout the nation as we speak. Candidates from both sides in the Southwest before Susan Rice going to New England and the president stopping off in Texas. Susan Rice with huge support there in Florida. If you look at Florida where it is right now, 5244, those look like some Obama numbers. And again, Ms. Rice is coming out of that Obama legacy, so it really makes no surprise that she would be doing uh, Obama-like numbers uh, as we saw in 2008 for the president, uh, uh, for President Obama. Uh, Colorado getting a new campaign headquarters for Ms. Rice, 46, 43, 11 percent undecided in that state. Coming over to Arizona, we can see 49, 43 with 8 percent undecided at this time. And But still, anybody's game there in Arizona. Donald Trump making it well known, speaking in Phoenix, uh, before going off to Iowa, where he uh, will be resting in the Midwest, before going to a town hall in St. Louis, or Kansas City, rather, and Ms. Rice going to Birmingham, Alabama for a nice town hall there in the south. Allies paying their fair share. Uh, the president is uh, definitely sticking with that uh, conservative nationalistic agenda that he's had uh, since the 2015 campaign cycle started. Um, I'm not sure if that's really helping him in more of the western states or the um, sort of coastal states. If you look at the beltway, it is either blue or purple, and that's not good if you're Donald Trump. If you're Susan Rice, you know that this is very competitive for you. Look at Virginia, her home state that I created for her, 54-38 with 8% undecided. Uh, honestly, I thought it would be a little bit higher. I thought maybe we might see some California number, um, like 59-39, something like that, potentially. Um, but strong Trump states would be obviously Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Ohio. Ohio is a big one. We're definitely going to be watching out for Ohio in the election result call. Uh, week 19 showing 54-42 for the president in that state. Um, but a lot of battleground. Arizona, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and again, look up here. New Hampshire, 44-44. That's a big deal if you're Donald Trump. You need these swing states. You have got to win them a lot more than what Susan Rice would need to win them. Uh, Susan Rice has many paths to 270. Donald Trump's path without Michigan, without Wisconsin, is going to be very difficult. Social justice coming in for Ms. Rice. Definitely helping out that Democratic base. Week 21, the final week as we are approaching the election call. 
I just want to remind you that 270 is the number needed to win. As New England comes in, it is still anyone's game. New England looking solid for Ms. Rice. Trump loses New Hampshire. He thought he may have uh, the potential to pick that off of the uh, uh, of, of New England. However, that was not something he was able to do. And it also appears that Trump will lose the beltway in the simulation. However, we'll hold Florida, we'll hold West Virginia, and we'll keep Ohio. The South strongly coming in support for the president at this time. However, Indiana, Mike Pence's home state, will flip. Michigan will flip, and uh, Illinois and Wisconsin will uh, will be true blue states, and that blue wall will hold up there in the Rust Belt for the Democrats. The Democrats have held on to the Midwest, uh, minus Ohio there, Cuyahoga County, not necessarily coming out strong for the Democrats in that cycle there. Uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, both flipping to the Democrats. Like I said, strong minority appeal with Ms. Rice winning over those uh, that Native American vote there definitely helped her out as well as the Latino vote and African American vote uh, coming out in the Southwest for uh, Ms. Rice at this time. However, Trump holding on to uh, Arizona. Ms. Rice will be the next president-elect of the United States with 325 to 213 votes for Ms. Rice. Uh, it says that Susan Rice has won the day uh, and presidency with a strong showing in both the popular vote and the electoral college. Uh, one of her most deciding factors was her use of ideology points, which she did use more than the president. Um, she also spent more money than President Trump. And this just goes to show you that even if your voice is small, even if you're not as well known, maybe you're somebody that, uh, you know, maybe you are somebody that doesn't necessarily uh, have a whole lot of recognition. Spending that extra money, having that grassroots campaign is definitely something that's going to help you uh, throughout a 50 state strategy that we saw Susan Rice do today. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and, um, you know, Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching the series so far. Really hope you guys are enjoying the series. Let me know who you want to see in future episodes. And also if you guys have another uh, strategy sort of game that you like to play or if you think you want to see me play, let me know down in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and enjoy. What?